Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Trade Finder Live. It's great to be back with you during market hours. I really love this new format, uh, especially to be able to spend the hour with Rob Roy, and get the topics of uh, the week discussed and be able to apply those afterwards. So welcome back, and it's great to have you all with us. Uh, my name is Zach, and most of you are likely familiar with me by now, but if you're new or joining us for the first time, welcome. It's great to have you with us. We do have a quick disclosure disclaimer we have to uh, cover off about all of our live webinars, and essentially that's just that we are not licensed investment advisors in the United States, so nothing is to be taken as personal investment advice. Now, this is available on our website, so please feel free to read that in detail at any time, um, or take a screenshot of it now if you like, but that's the main point to take away from it, really. Other than that, we do have a brief Q&A portion um, towards the end of the session, and that covers off the housekeeping details. Uh, Christine Lagarde said this morning that bearing a shock, the ECB seems poised to cut rates in June. That uh, give a little pause in the U.S. markets. So I'm interested in what Rob has to think about that, and of course, uh, all of his other thoughts on the markets. So, without further ado, Mr. Rob Roy. Hey, Zach. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Trade Finder Live. As you can see, I've been hanging uh, up here in the markets. I do want to let everybody know that uh, we are aware that the resolution is a tiny bit fuzzy. Uh, apologize for that. That's uh, due to the internet issues up here in the mountains. But positive news is Starlink is available here now. So we're going to help Elon out because, uh, you know, he's lost some value uh, uh, over the last uh, few weeks. We will look at Tesla uh, today because uh, it broke that 160 level. So we need to take a look at that. Uh, but we will be able to uh, increase the bandwidth here. Uh, when I'm in the mountains and uh, clarify uh, the picture a little bit. So I want everybody to be aware of that right up front. All right, so when we take a look at the daily chart of the S&P, I wanted to show this quickly because we have labeled away for now, or at least the software has, and I am using the new uh, beta version of the live Elliott Wave software. So I'm going to show you the live chart here in just a minute, which is really cool. If you were with us last week, you got a chance to see it. Uh, for those of you that by chance, uh, haven't heard me say this <coughs> or haven't done it yet, please go to hub.com and give you a copy. It's free. The beta version, you get live LA wave charts. Uh, there's no reason not to. So if you haven't done it yet, uh, go ahead and go there. There's so many really cool features and uh, we'll be going through those. Zach will be showing you that uh, uh, in a minute and I'll show you how we can switch over. But Notice that the wave four is right at the 23.6% FIB corrective level. Uh, if you've listened to me before, you know that's not one of my favorite levels, but it is a FIB level. And now we are about to close this gap right here uh, that exists uh, on the S&P chart right around 500. It's a big round number, so we're getting there. Uh, and perhaps this is another reason why the markets may pause. Uh, as Zach mentioned, um, Christine Lagarde was uh, interviewed. She's the head of the ECB uh, and said they are still poised to cut in June, uh, even though the Fed fund futures have been moving out the Fed cut uh, for here in the U.S. Uh, but perhaps maybe that's calmed the markets just a little bit. And uh, maybe we hold this 500 level. Uh, I'll put on the uh, moving averages so you can see that uh, we have broken below the 50-day moving average. So call that a test of the 50-day moving average coming down here into this uh, important level of 500. Uh, and you can see how we're about to close that gap. So maybe that gives us a little bit of a bounce as I spread the chart out a little bit. You can see the separation from the 10-day moving average. There's the 10-day moving average right there. And so we're a little oversold now, short term. Now here's the cool part, you can come over here and you can switch it to a live chart. And I like to watch the three minute chart. You can pick whatever, you saw all the different choices that you have, um, whether or not you want 30 minutes, an hour, whatever, you can pick your favorite one. I like the uh, three minute chart. Uh, and then down here it says insufficient data. Uh, so it's not showing the Elliott wave. So what you do uh, in order to the LA wave is just allow it to have a little more data. So all I did was click this minus button. It showed a little more data and that activated the algorithm and that puts us on 
So now we take a look here at the uh, uh, today's chart, the live chart. You can see we gapped up and then we had this big wave three down. The wave four got right to the 23.6% level. And now we're trying to go through here and consolidate uh, just above that 500 level. Uh, notice that the uh, wave three hit 502. So maybe we had continue down uh, on this uh, uh, wave five intraday. Uh, but then let's see if that 500 level can hold. Now we're going to do things just a little bit different this week. If you've been watching Trade Finder, um, and a lot of you have asked um, when we have the alert service, our impulse AI based impulse service on uh, evotrader.com if it does the downside as well. Uh, and we do have some bearish results coming in from the AI. Uh, now, um, I want to be clear on this, that this is not uh, a qualifying score yet. It's a 67 score. When we look at this um, for uh, alerts, we want to see the a score at 75 or above, uh, but look at what's going on here. This is BEN is the symbol, B is in boy, EN. Uh, and on the intraday chart, so I'm still on the three minute chart, uh, you can see that we are moving to the downside here and we have this target range. We still have that tap box that I showed you uh, on the legacy software. Uh, we've got just such a really nice intraday uh, Elliott wave pattern here that if you want to follow along uh, with this alert, so this is going to be our case study consideration. We're going to do a bearish one. And I didn't want to wait to see what happened over the next hour uh, because we could come all the way down here uh, to this target price of 24 uh, and be done with that uh, before we get to the end of the uh, broadcast. So at this point in time, uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, give the controls back to Zach uh, so that he can take you into the software, show you how to uh, post. Uh, now there's a difference between a post and an idea. And because this doesn't technically qualify, it's not high enough uh, to be an actual idea. We're going to put this as a post. So we're going to say that we think that uh, Ben uh, BEN will go down to 24, and that should happen rather quickly. <laughs> so Zach, you can use the uh, one month uh, time frame on this. So it's just too good of an intraday pattern. That's another one of the beauties of this software. If you're more of a short term trader, if you're really interested in uh, uh, more on the day trading side, uh, the software works for you as well. If you're more of a two to three days to two to three weeks, which is kind of where we are on the intraday chart or the end of day charts, I should say. Uh, that works out great as well. Everybody has their own um, motive, um, MO, uh, um, motive operandi. And uh, um, some of you that like the shorter term stuff uh, may want to follow this sooner rather than later. So, Zach, I'm going to go ahead and let you take the screen at this point, and then we'll come back and do the rest of the markets and the things that we usually do. But I wanted to just go ahead and load this in. I just want to be clear again. The score is only 67, so it's not quite the 75 score that we're looking for, but it's the first time we've posted something bearish in a very long time here at um, Trade Finder for our uh, uh, case study for the week. So uh, at this point in time, Zach, I'm going to let you go ahead and take the screen back over uh, and show the folks how to go ahead and post something uh, on their, uh, uh, their own version because you can customize it. Uh, to the themes that you're interested in. I don't want to take your thunder away, Zach. So I'm just going to shut up and give you the uh, give you the screen at this point in time. No worries at all. Yeah, no, I think my screen's been sharing for a bit. So some might have seen I uh, went through and showed where you can locate the idea versus a post. And so uh, with the limited information on this one, I just I kind of wrote that down as a note and figured that I'd uh, get with you to uh, ensure we you know, make this the finalized post we want it to be. Uh, but we got the EN down to uh, 24 in around a month's time. So again, just for everyone out there watching, uh, the difference between a post and an idea 
uh, it's important to emphasize that a post is simply a speculative shot, like kind of like a discussion board um, in a sense, although um, it's not meant to be um, a discussion for, um, you know, a chat. It's more or less an idea that you're just not necessarily 100% ready to uh, pull the trigger on or as if you were uh, really trading, you know, and that again goes back to my example I think I used in the last session uh, uh, comparing it to paper trading. It's a great way to um, hold yourself accountable to those still the real metrics in real time and basically participate in every part of the trade except the real uh, capital, of course. So uh, this is just going to have the um, primary functions of a post uh, window here. And so we'll get out of this window and see the idea. You can see it's a bit more extensive. We can go through the title of the idea or search for the symbol across uh, markets. You can lock in your target price, the exact time frame. So that would have been that one month that Rob was referring to. And um, just for quick uh, example, I'll just show you how quick it comes up here. Uh, there we are right there. And after locking in the, what was that price of 24, Rob? So 24. Um, yep. So um, if Rob was ready for this, then this would be posted as an idea. However, uh, as he explained, it's not quite there yet. So we are going to have this posted. Be sure to look out for that um, here in the next few hours. Um, overall, though, I do want to just give a quick demo of the platform um, for those that might have not been able to join us last time. I think one of the coolest features about what the beta that we have here available is how you can search through all of the different categories and how everything is organized for you uh, based off of whatever your interest may be in currently in that week in the market, what current trades you might have, uh, sectors affiliated with the trades or open positions you might have at this time. And um, I think it's just a great way to be able to come up with ideas. It's a great platform for creativity to understand, to understand um, where people's minds are at, where money's moving. And so um, there's lots and lots more to show off about this platform, but don't want to steal the, the valuable hour we have with Rob here. So <clears throat> I won't uh, ramble on. I'll pass back over to the professional. <laughs> All right. So um, I will, uh, do I need to, uh... Take the screen back here. So do I do the sharing or are we already back on my chart? Looks like we're already right. back there. All right, thanks, Ryan. Uh, and as you can see, just from the time when I loaded this chart, we've already had a little intraday gap down here and that showed up when Zach was showing it as well. You probably saw it live happen when Zach was bringing this up. So we'll see if this uh, intraday uh, move continues, but just again to highlight that all the things that we talk about here with the LA wave, um, the fib levels, everything else, it works no matter what time frame you're talking about. And that's why I like to keep the three minute chart on. Uh, so it's just a, a really cool software and uh, the themes that Zach showed you, uh, et cetera. Uh, you have uh, the ability to post your own ideas and have people vote on them, et cetera. So uh, really take advantage of this. So um, maybe we'll come back and look at this uh, towards the end of the hour and see if. Uh, uh, we've had any uh, further uh, move to the downside, but we wanted to get that one out early. So I'm going to go back to a chart of the SPY uh, and see uh, if we're still holding in that level. So far, we are uh, just around here, the 504 level. And we'll see if that uh, uh, continues, if we can mount some sort of a bounce back to the upside. Um, I don't know if the ECB... Christine Lagarde's comments can calm the U.S. markets, but clearly uh, the fact that uh, we're having to move the forecasted rate cut out uh, has uh, uh, put a little bit of a bearish move, uh, especially enough to uh, give us that uh, uh, wave four labeling there that I showed you uh, in the very beginning. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at some of the rest of the U.S. markets. We'll look at the uh, diamonds uh, for the Dow. And you can see uh, we're all the way down to the 38.2% corrective level uh, on the Dow. So we actually can move this uh, line down here um, to the point where uh, we're in this kind of area uh, because I clicked on the edge instead of the middle. I, here, let me move this so that we, well, there we go. Now we have a nice horizontal line. Uh, the 38.2% level actually has some congestion there from December and January. 
So uh, I guess my point here is this could be uh, where the corrective move ends. Uh, on the negative side, we do have on the daily chart of the Dow a bearish 1030 cross, uh, but we are a bit oversold here. Uh, we're at an area where it should act as at least temporary support. So we'll see if we get some sort of a bounce. Uh, we're going to have to wait and see if that's enough of a bounce to start to get us up towards a potential wave five target. Uh, but for now, um, this is an area where uh, maybe we at least calm down uh, a little bit from the uh, selling pressure that we've had. Um, if we uh, continue up from here, uh, then the rally continues. Uh, but look at this area right here. Uh, when you take a look right uh, in this uh, um, area of the uh, rally here from uh, the what 340 level all the way up to 370 all the way through there and you can see it highlights all the prices as you go uh, so I'm moving quickly uh, but um, yeah if we can't hold right here it's a bit of a vacuum we're going to come all the way down to this wave five high from last summer around last August so if uh, if that doesn't hold then we're looking at that's the vacuum move uh, right there uh, where you can see that uh, um, we have um, a bit of gap and that's because we had a straight move to the upside. So there's no resistance coming lower on the Dow uh, if we don't hold right here. So this is gonna be a key level uh, as far as any potential move higher uh, for the Dow. If we give this up, I think that that pattern is over and we come all the way down here. So the next day or two are gonna be extremely important uh, for the Dow to see what happens, um, if it can hold this level or not. So Thursday night, uh, when we have our insiders meeting, that's for alert subscribers only uh, at evotrader.com. Uh, we will certainly have a little more information to see if uh, uh, at least into the close today and tomorrow, uh, and then throughout the trading day Thursday, uh, if we're able to hold this level, if we've broken it by then, uh, then we know that we're going to see a whole lot more bearish trades like the one that we shared with you today uh, as far as uh, alerts going out. So just I just want to be really clear uh, on that BEN, and this is the reason why, uh, and Zach explained it extremely well, the difference between a post and an idea. Uh, we never send out. Um, alerts to our alert subscribers unless the AI score is 75 or above. So that will not go out as an alert uh, to our alert subscribers, but uh, we're starting to get a bigger list of bearish candidates and the AI scores are going up. They just haven't quite got high enough uh, to where we would want to start sending out bearish alerts, but we're getting in the neighborhood there. So uh, something to keep an eye on as we move forward. So taking a look at the cues, and I kind of skipped the TNX, but I'm going to show you that right after the Qs. Uh, and uh, let me go ahead and take this line off. Uh, so remove that drawing. Uh, you can see, look how this area forecasted on the Ellie wave absolutely nailed where we went on the wave five higher. So it just, there's the range uh, and we split it perfectly. So once again, uh, Elliott Wave hitting the uh, the Qs spot on. We're also below the 50-day moving average on the uh, Qs. So what all this stuff means is oftentimes, and you can see how we kind of came down in the neighborhood of the 50-day moving average. We didn't really break it uh, until we go back to last August. And then we got a little bit of a bounce, but we worked our way down. That's a possibility here as well. Um, that maybe we get a short-term bounce because we're just a bit oversold here, uh, and then we could start working our way down uh, if that's the end of the uh, five-wave pattern. Uh, it's going to be really, uh, uh, really interesting to see uh, as we move into the next few days uh, what happens here. So we're kind of in uh, that potential transition area uh, from maybe we go to a uh, majority of bullish trades to the majority of bearish trades, uh, but uh, we'll find out uh, over the next uh, the next couple of days, as I said, and probably have a lot more information uh, as we move into our 
insiders meeting Thursday night. So here's what's going on with rates, and that's the problem. Uh, we mentioned when the chart relabeled uh, to a wave three uh, that that was a uh, that was a concern, and that has played out. The wave three has continued. We had a great zigzag pattern here, uh, right almost to the 61.8 percent level, which is going to give you in between the 50 and 61.8 percent B wave corrections. You're looking for 100 percent extension. We kind of broke above that, um, and we're we're a bit to the upside here on rates. Kind of hard to say overbought because prices and yields move in inverse proportion uh, when it comes to rates. So we're just uh, we're a little bit to the upside here um, on rates, and maybe rates need to calm down a little bit. That could coincide with a little bit of a at least a short term bounce in the markets. And then, as I said, once we hit the short term bounce. Then we have to go back and see, is this something that's lasting? Can we move into a wave five or are we just bouncing from an oversold condition and we start to move back to the downside? Um, that's gonna be the key. Uh, and uh, interest rates uh, moving higher uh, are telling us, and boy, I pay a lot of attention to the bond market if you've heard me um, over the years. I haven't said this in a while, but I think it's important to, uh, uh, go back and uh, reiterate that uh, if you want to be a good equities trader, whether or not it's trading derivatives as far as options, et cetera, on the equities market, uh, but if you want to be a good trader in the equities market, you need to have at least a working knowledge of the bond market. Uh, it's widely reviewed uh, and regarded that the smarter traders are in the bond market. Uh, the bond market is larger than the equities market uh, by uh, uh, capital. Uh, so it, it, it's important uh, to uh, at least pay attention to what the bond market is showing you. That's why I show you the 10-year each and every week, uh, because that's the um, importance of it. We didn't quite get up and fill this gap yet, uh, but yeah, yikes, we are, uh, uh, we are moving to uh, getting a point of um, uh, in interest in the um, bond market. <laughs> to uh, forecast where things are going to go. Uh, and so far, it's been spot on. Now, here we are with the IWM. If you uh, are an alert subscriber and you were with us yesterday uh, for the EWO Trader Live, uh, I talked about how uh, it sure seemed like uh, we have had the bearish cross here, the 1030 cross on the IWM. We went right up to the 210 level, which was not only the upper end of resistance that we've had for quite some time, but once again, split that forecasted move uh, on the Elliott wave. Um, just nailed this one again, uh, just like it did the Qs. Uh, and it seems like we're destined to come down and test the support level at 190 on the IWM. Now, note we are oversold. There's a 10-day moving average up there. And here we are down here. So there's good separation there. So we are definitely uh, a bit oversold on the IWM. Maybe that plays into the whole at least short-term bounce scenario uh, that we may get. Um, but it feels like we want to come down and at least test 190. So on any sort of a short-term bounce, maybe that's an entry uh, short side to at least trade the IWM uh, down to 190. And then we'll have to see uh, where it goes from there. But uh, that's a little oversold. You certainly don't want to chase that right now. Uh, you don't want to put on a trade to try to get down to the 190 level uh, at this moment. Uh, it's too oversold. Maybe it goes straight down there. Uh, and those are the trades that I miss. Uh, but my discipline and the things that I've learned over time, experience, uh, is you don't, you don't try to jump in uh, when you're oversold like this. It just, it just doesn't work out well uh, when you do that. Um, so let's see if we get a little bit of a bounce. Yes, if we could make it back to 200, I think that could be a great entry for a further downside move uh, on the IWM. Perhaps we don't get quite that high, uh, but we did spend some time. There is some consolidation here through that 200 level, um, but uh, uh, a little bit of a bounce here. You don't have to necessarily wait for it to get to 200, but looking for a potential uh, move lower there. Uh, so now let's go ahead and take a look at some of the international markets. Uh, we'll look at the EWA on Thursday nights during 
uh, Trade Finder. And this kind of, because Ben is uh, uh, Franklin Resources, uh, Australia is resource rich. Uh, we had that huge move uh, up in the, all the resources and they are extremely overbought. Uh, and so I think we're getting a little bit of a corrective move. Uh, and notice here, we made it into the range of the tap box here. We didn't quite hit the midpoint, but we made it right in there. We tested it. Uh, we talked about this last week uh, where we were right at an area of resistance uh, and we needed to break higher. This goes back to and the whole mentorship thing, that's what we're trying to do at EwoTrader.com is help mentor people. Uh, I, I had a mentor myself, and one of his rules was third time's the charm. Uh, in other words, when you test a resistance level, just like we did here, on the third try, whatever happens tends to continue, at least over the short to intermediate term. And that played out perfectly here on the chart of the EWA. See, we came up here in the wave three, we tested it here on the wave five, we tested it again here uh, in early April, and then we gapped down and that move continued. So that was one of the things that he taught me uh, is to watch when you have, I know a lot of people call it a triple top, uh, but once you get there, uh, if you break higher, you're probably off and running. If you break lower, you're probably gonna continue lower. And this is a perfect example of that. Um, and so um, if you're newer in the world of trading, uh, the market will be happy to educate you, but that is one very expensive way to learn, uh, learning from uh, people that have been here before. I've been doing it for 27 years. Our other trader at EWOTrader.com, uh, Jeff has been uh, in the markets for 35 years. So we have a lot of experience uh, to help guide you. So let's see what Canada is doing here on the EWC uh, and very similar chart there. Now notice it nailed the midpoint of that tap box here and that stands for time and price projection. Uh, and so uh, just bam, uh, once again, a bit oversold here. Also good examples of an old phrase the market takes the stairs up and the elevator down. And you're seeing that here, how we just kind of bound our way up, going up the stairs, and then wham, when you start to go to the downside, it goes rather quickly. Once again here, a bit oversold short term, uh, and we didn't quite break that 100% level, which means that perhaps we're gonna work our way all the way down to the previous four, uh, and that's really key here. On the EWC, I know we have a lot of uh, uh, subscribers from Canada. Uh, that would uh, tell you that you're likely to move down to the previous four. Uh, I don't think it goes quickly to the previous four because we do have a bit of congestion right through here, right where we are now. So you can see that could be an area uh, again for a short term bounce. Uh, and that you know, if we get a short-term bounce now, that brings us into that next PCE report, uh, which is April 26th, I believe, uh, is when the next one comes out. And if that comes in hot, maybe we get a short-term bounce in front of it, and then we sell off again afterwards. Just conjecture, uh, just hyperbole, just talking about what could happen. Um, but the bottom line is uh, we're a touch oversold in these markets that we've been showing you. Uh, let's see what Germany looks like. Uh, that's been a great place to be, as you know, if you've been watching uh, and they're following the same thing. Once again, just the Elliott Wave nailing that Wave 5. Uh, look at that. It's just unreal. So um, one of the things that I always say is people have varying views on Elliott Wave. Uh, and the people that say negative things about Elliott Wave, my comment to them, and I don't ever, um, you know, chastise anyone or, or try to say anything negative. I post the U.S. market update every weekend. Uh, we have 42,000 people uh, that are subscribers to that. So we get a lot of commentary. I love it because opposing views is what makes the markets. Uh, but when someone says something negative about Elliott Wave, my only response is, if you feel that way, you probably don't have enough education on Elliott Wave. And we have a great education site um, on uh, ewotrader.com 
we really pride ourselves in the quality of the education there. Uh, so there's a lot to it. It's pretty complex uh, and you want to learn about it. So if you haven't had success with it, maybe maybe you just need to increase your uh, educational uh, fortitude uh, on Elliott Wave because I'm showing you chart after chart that it's just been spot on. Uh, so here, when we look at uh, the EWG, you can see that um, there's where the previous uh, wave three is. Uh, once again, we're a bit oversold short term. All these markets breaking the 50 day moving average. So we have to find out, and that's what the next couple of days are going to tell us. Are we starting into a bear market or is this just a test of the 50 day mo moving average to move back up? The market, as I mentioned to you last week, is going to try to go through and reprice. I said this in the U.S. market update as well. It's going to try to price in rate cuts coming further than expected, potentially not even this year. And that's why we'll see if uh, uh, the Fed takes any um, direction from the ECB. Probably not, but maybe, uh, in, at least in their commentary from Fed governors. Uh, but um going through and looking at uh, uh these charts uh, it looks like we'll at least get some sort of a short-term bounce here um before uh, uh deciding uh, if we're moving into a more bearish market uh which could happen uh if it looks like that pc report is hot uh, and no market once again the tap box nailing that upward move, uh, but we're still above the 50 day moving average on the INDA. So clearly this is the best performing market of the ones that we've shown you. So we're in this area right here. Uh, and so um, even if we don't hold the 50 day moving average, we could test 50 again, but we tested it back here in the middle of March and ran back up. And then we tested once again uh, where the wave five high was. So right now uh, we're kind of in no man's land uh, here on the INDA. So that's the trading range where resistance is right there at that previous wave five high, just in the 52 area, just above it. Uh, and then 50 is support. So now we need to just kind of sit on our hands a little bit. Uh, we have a lot of subscribers from India as well. In fact, we've had some of our U.S. subscribers that have moved to India for uh, jobs because, you know, tech jobs are going crazy there, uh, taking a lot of business from China, et cetera. Uh, but for now, uh, we just have to uh, kind of uh, let this play out. So this is an area of pause for the INDA. We need to see, are we going to break below 50? If so, we're going back to the previous four. Or can we break above that wave five high? Uh, and start an extended run. Uh, we've had such a big run here on the INDA, massive move to the upside there. Um, it wouldn't be surprising to see some sort of a pause, uh, but you don't wanna jump the gun yet. Uh, we're not that far oversold on the INDA. We're still above the 50 day moving average. Let's just watch this one uh, and see which direction it breaks and then we can step back in for directional trade. So right in between support and resistance on the INDA. And for those of you that are following uh, the cryptos, uh, we just received, or the hub organization just received all the crypto data. There's gonna be 200 different crypto signals uh, on the uh, new platform. As soon as the programmers get that data programmed in, uh, we'll be able to show you all the charts of uh, whatever, unless you have a favorite that's not in the top 200 uh, of all the cryptos. Uh, but as you're probably aware, uh, Bitcoin uh, drew down over the weekend. Uh, the halving is coming in on the 18th. So we're two days away from that. That cuts the amount of Bitcoin in half. So from the supply demand uh, thing, what normally happens is, uh, uh, you know, like following a stock split, uh, but the stock split does the opposite. Uh, you get twice as many shares at half the price. Uh, with the having, you get half as many Bitcoin. So it's a different thing from a supply demand curve. Uh, and we'll see um, if Bitcoin turns and starts to run back to the upside 
after the 18th, but we had a big run into it, a little bit of a pause here, a little bit of a drawback uh, going into the having, and then, you know, we'll, by the time we talk again, um, maybe we'll have Bitcoin on here uh, and we'll be able to show it to you. Uh, but just so I wanted to give a little commentary there because we usually bring it up uh, throughout this. Um, but um, that's been why we don't have it here because they don't want to just show Bitcoin and Ethereum like the legacy software did. Uh, they want to be everything to uh, uh, all you crypto traders as well. So as soon as the programmers get the data in, um, they were late from the data supplier getting us the information. Um, but uh, uh, we'll have it here very soon. So just another reason uh, to take advantage of this software if you haven't already. So that's the commentary that I wanted to give, Zach. Uh, I'll go back and show the live chart of the SPY while we set up for uh, the Q&A. We've already done uh, the case study consideration. Um, well, before we do that, let me go ahead and uh, show the previous uh, case studies. There was only two of them left. We had closed out Google for a nice uh, winner uh, already. Uh, obviously, these charts probably aren't going to look too good. Uh, this one is one uh, that you would have exited. Uh, because we said as long as it held above the wave three high, uh, we would be okay. So that one, you exit, take the loss there. That's what happens in a transitionary market where you go from uh, being uh, bullish to potentially bearish. Uh, now, uh, when we look at LRN, uh, this one uh, is just breaking below that uh, um, level. And one of the things that I talk about often uh, is one of the cool things about Elliott Wave uh, is when you have a pattern that fails, and this is not a failed pattern yet, it has to break that four, but it is breaking below uh, some awfully good support here. Uh, and look, we had this big gap down here, uh, and maybe um, we, uh, we start to head down there. So if you're really aggressive, uh, and I always try to try to give both conservative and aggressive ideas. Everybody has their own risk tolerance. You know what yours is. If you're really aggressive, this could be an early entry into a bearish trade uh, where you're expecting this five wave pattern to disqualify. And then perhaps we look at coming down to fill this gap. If you're more conservative and you're looking for a bearish trade, that's a slightly different uh, set up and you would want to see that wave four broken first. Uh, so um, the conservative bearish entry here and um, not every opportunity gives you the chance to flip from bullish to bearish, but some do. Uh, and uh, this one is one of those opportunities. Um, ROL, I, I don't think has the same scenario. So you just close that out, take the loss and move on. Uh, but on LRN, uh, you have the opportunity to flip from being bullish to bearish and then uh, have a nice trade there, recoup the losses in the bullish trade. So we like to do that when we can, when the setup is there. So once again, if you're aggressive, you give it a shot now, you probably at least get a move down to this previous four. But if you're a little more conservative, let it break that four level first. Uh, and that's right at 55. So we'd want to see it break 55 and then potentially uh, move into uh, the short side. So that's another potential short candidate um, if, uh, if things work out that way. So, all right, now, Zach, um, I will go back and show the live chart of the SPY, uh, and then uh, we'll go ahead and uh, move into some Q&A. We'll actually have a couple extra minutes uh, on the Q&A uh, today. Uh, so uh, I guess I talked to faster than normal. Uh, but then you can see that uh, we did take a shot uh, to break lower, but it recovered rather quickly. Uh, just love going through and watching all this stuff that happens on an intraday basis here uh, on LA Wave. So you can see, boom, we went down, uh, hit the 23%. Uh, we took out that wave three low there, uh, but immediately ran right back up. Um, so uh, fulfilled the intraday chart uh, and then moved back um, to the, uh, the previous four. So now what we have is on the intraday chart, we have a completed wave five. So uh, we went back down here, labeled the five, 
move back up to where the previous four is. Uh, and now we just have to wait and see uh, what new pattern starts out uh, on the uh, uh, intraday chart. So um, this would be the point where if you're a day trader, you're kind of like, okay, um, that's done. Now let me wait and see um, what happens from here and see if we have a, uh, another setup. Yesterday's downward setup uh, was beautiful intraday, just a clockwork um, five wave pattern uh, to the downside. And there it is, look at that. Um, we did gap down um, and uh, move back up here. So we started early uh, and then gap down, wave four, wave five down, just beautiful yesterday. So you could have done really well on the downside as a day trader if you're using this software and following along. All right, okay, so I am gonna shut up now, Zach, and uh, we'll take uh, some questions with the time we have remaining. <laughs> no worries, sounds great. Uh, thanks for uh, some great insight there, and I just wanna remind everyone that might be joining us live to go ahead and hit that like button. It goes a long way for our algorithm, or for the YouTube algorithm, that is, and for us, so greatly appreciate it. Um, for confirmation real quick, Rob, that chart that you had said, uh, to exit when it broke above uh, that what was that um, after the good charter was that in regard to alphabet uh, no Google we already posted the close there um, so that one that one should be done um, right the next one was R R O L R O L and then L R N yeah R O L and L R N were the only two that were left um, R O L just exit yeah, take no, the loss no and watch for a downside entry. I, I got to jump in uh, here, Zach, before we get to the Q&A, uh, because I wanted to show this chart at Tesla. I promised that in the beginning. Uh, we've been talking about this 160 level for quite some time. And as you can see, we're breaking that today, uh, which is really important. Uh, 160 needed to hold on Tesla. I mentioned that I didn't know where the catalyst was for Tesla to go higher. Um, Elon announced yesterday is laying off 10% of the workforce. So that shows that he's in cost cutting mode, uh, especially since he's going to have to likely uh, reduce costs on the uh, vehicles that are being produced. So uh, you all know the rules now. Now we want to see if we get follow through here. Uh, but we've gapped below uh, 160 uh, in today's move. Um, just really curious as to what we're doing on the live chart here. So after that gap down, we're kind of going sideways. Uh, but uh, the key here, we again, been talking about this for so long, uh, is that uh, we have broken 160 on Tesla. I know some of you are short Tesla because you post the comments. You probably have a smile on your face today, but before you get too happy, remember that head fakes occur in the market. That's why we have the follow through or confirmation day requirement. But um, if you're short Tesla, uh, it looks like you might have something working here. You can see the wave five forecast is down at 125, but we've also shown that there's really nothing um, other than an Elliott wave pattern uh, to stop it from perhaps going down to 100. So big, important move in Tesla that I want to get out. I'm somebody would have asked the question on it, but I did say I would in the beginning, so I wanted to go ahead and follow through with that. All right, I really am ready for Q and A now, Zach. I promise. Uh, I don't know if I believe you, but we'll we'll find <laughs> out. <laughs> now you're a professional trader and a psychic because you are correct. There's a Tesla all through the Q and A uh, from all the forums and from uh, our Zoom subscribers as well. Um, I did just want to also confirm though. With the idea, we had a question around, or sorry, now I'm tripping myself up with the post. We had a question around if it was uh, official at EEN May 17, 20, 22 and a half puts. And I just wanted to confirm before uh, passing over to you, Rob, that the point of the, the post is that it's not set, that you're not ready to necessarily define a exact time frame and ready to execute that position. So um, it's kind of a draft idea is the best way to explain a post. It's not ready to be fully published, not ready to take action on it. It's in that draft stage in the queue. And then once it's ready to, as if you were to execute that trade, that's when you would make the, the idea published and official for the community to see. Now for, uh, 
forgot, I'm not screen sharing. I thought I was, I was going to start showing my platform. Um, I'll, uh, I'll go back to uh, that at the end of the session. Let's get to some Q and A here. Okay. So, and just to, further, just to further your point, Zach, before we get into the first question is, um, remember that we look for a score of 75 or above uh, for an idea or to send out uh, and or to send out an alert to our alert subscribers. The score was 67. It's the highest bearish score we've had yet from the AI, but it's not quite 75. Um, but if somebody wanted to follow it because the pattern looks so good, I totally understand that. But we can't comment on specific options or option strikes because that gets in the realm of individual investment advice. Um, so, um, yeah, I, I, I know all that sucks. Uh, we think it sucks, too. But those are the rules that we're bound by. And, and that's what we have to follow. So um, I just wanted to, you know, uh, it, I know people have speculative money and, you know, it, it, I, I can't say any more. Anyway, let's go on. Very well. Sounds like a plan. Let's go ahead and go over to a question from um, Tim on regards to the plan for MMC. Uh, yeah, MMC oh. is one of the uh, alerts that we have for our alert subscribers. Uh, here's the chart. We have earnings coming up. And so we are going to, as long as we stay, uh, now that could change, uh, but as long as we hold uh, right in this uh, area here, uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, allow it to move into the earnings report. Um, you can see that we are in a corrective mode. And I do wanna highlight uh, that we have uh, a pretty nice setup here uh, on the zigzag. I've shown this before where we have a complex C wave, uh, but I'll just show the big one for now. Uh, and um, the fact that we're still uh, there's the blue and it's a 50% correction from the start, uh, which is just a golden setup uh, on the whole zigzag thing. So the plan is barring breaking through this area here uh, where we have congestion. If we break down from there, then that changes the scenario. But as long as we can hold it into the earnings, that's the plan uh, and see uh, uh, if they come up with a, an uh, upside earnings surprise. But um, that zigzag pattern uh, you can see is extremely well structured. It's, you know, it's linear, it looks great. So um, yeah, that we're gonna, it's down now, I know, but um, we're going to do our best to hold it into the earnings report uh, if we can stay in this area. It's trying to hold here. And if it does, then that's the plan. Very well, thanks for that, Rob. See, we do have some hands up. We unfortunately don't have time uh, due to the constraints of this session. Rob's generous enough to provide the uh, hour of his time during the live trading hours in the market. So um, we just don't have time for this, uh, uh, for voice questions in this session rather, but we love hearing the voices and associating those to names and being able to get to know you all more. So please feel encouraged to ask those voice questions on Thursdays. I see we have some questions coming in here around uh, Jeff's Delta Neutral portfolio. I'm just gonna say Rob is uh, not going to speak for Delta or for any of Jeff's positions, just as Jeff wouldn't speak for um, Ralph's positions unless they had informed each other too. So uh, please um, send those questions in to support or definitely ask them to Mr. Beamer on Thursday nights for the insiders meeting. Um, Young here has a question on AVGO, will bounce back and win. Well, uh, good old Broadcom um, has been holding in there uh, extremely well. As you can see, though, it has hit the Wave 5 tap box. No bearish cross yet. Still well above the 50-day moving average, so certainly outperforming some of the other things we've looked at uh, in the tech world. Uh, so my comment here uh, is as long as we can stay above this uh, 1300 level uh, on AVGO, uh, I think if you're long this stock and, and you want to be long it, uh, you can continue to do that. Uh, if we took the, um, the DMI on here, which I've turned on, um, it's decent. Um, it's not fantastic because the positive directional indicator is coming down, but that's going to happen when you go through a sideways consolidation. Uh, but you're probably in one of the better looking charts in Techland right now with what's been going on 
uh, with interest rates, we still have the top of the tack box that could be hit up there around 1500. Um, so uh, if, if you're long this stock, uh, your closest area is right here at 1300. Uh, if you have a little bit of risk tolerance, you could even hang in there uh, until we came down to somewhere in this uh, uh, 1250 to where the 50 day moving average is uh, because there's resistance there from January and February. We broke above it, we broke back below it, and now we're holding above it. Uh, so at least for now, um, that's one of the better looking charts. And if, if we get a bit of a bounce in the markets, even if it's just a short term bounce from these oversold conditions that I've been highlighting, um, that one could be, uh, that one could make a nice move. So that's one of the better looking charts. So you're on a good one there. Um, but you're also in areas of support that need to hold. So uh, kind of a double-edged sword there. Indeed. We have lots of requests around PLTR. What's going on there? We haven't looked at that one in a while. So let's bring up Palantir. Um, and uh, we had that, uh, you know, because they mentioned the magic words, the big move to the upside. Uh, now you can see that we are breaking down below that area that you wanted it to hold. So this is a little bit of a concern here, right through there, or it was two weeks uh, consolidating in that 22 and a half area. You wanted to see that. Now today is a little bit of a uh-oh um, type of a scenario because uh, we're breaking down here. Now we're at a 50% correction, um, but gosh, you have to look at, oh, that gap down there. So that's the problem with, uh, Palantir, uh, you're going to want to watch this one really closely. I've left the DMI on. We have a bearish uh, move to the upside there. Uh, the ADX isn't really caught on to the downside move yet, but the negative directional indicator is showing that sellers have stepped in. So I would be cautious of this one. Um, it needs to get back above 22 and a half rather quickly. See if we can get a bounce off this 50% wave four. Uh, if not, then we may be looking at filling that gap. So be really careful on that one. Let's go over to Lulu. Oh, indeed, we're getting some blasts from the past, but we haven't looked at uh, in a while. And, uh, you know, Lulu finally, uh, gosh, if I can type it in correctly, had a uh, um, disappointing earnings report for uh, the first time uh, in a while. You can see that gap down. Uh, and just just has continued lower in a wave three. Now the the DMI is uh, is looking bad. Uh, you probably know that I don't pay as much attention to the ADX on a downward move because it's a little more of a lagging indicator on downward moves. I like the CCI, so we'll pull that up. Um, but I do pay attention to the two directional indicators because they're far more responsive to the day to day move. Uh, but um when when we look at this uh, uh yeah it uh, looks like um where's the bottom uh so around 300 is where all the support is uh and we're getting into that area now um so we may have a little bit more downside to go there uh on um lulu let's see what the cci looks like so I'll turn that on um We'll take the uh, ADX off and um, we, uh, we're just kind of leveling off here. So uh, the CCI is at least saying that perhaps some of this downward move here um, is uh, um, waning in strength. Uh, so that would give you maybe a little bit of, uh, of hope there. Uh, we put the moving averages on. We're a little bit uh, oversold, not greatly. Uh, oversold on it, but uh, uh, we're getting to uh, the point where, um, you know, maybe uh, we can get just a little bit of a bounce back up there towards that 350 level. You can see that there's where all that uh, support resistance was uh, right in through that area. Maybe we bounce back as high as that. Um, but, you know, the interesting thing here is um, they're trading more off this earnings report uh retail sales as uh, uh we highlighted yesterday's act on uh, evo trader live uh came in pretty good 
uh, more than double the expectations, but that's certainly not helping uh, Lulu right now. So, yeah, no, um, was uh, yours on Lulu there? It came through for a PLTR, so I don't know if it's just a bit of a delay. So, um, it yeah, might have just been, been better. Yeah, it didn't switch over, but it was the Lulu chart. Very well. That's what I figured there. So let's go over to a question on coin. What's going on huh. with coin cryptos? Um, coin is um, kind of going along with what's happened. Uh, we have commented on how it's uh, you know really tied into the whole uh, scenario with Bitcoin. Uh, we had this triangle just like we had in Bitcoin. Uh, it's broken to the downside because Bitcoin did as well. Uh, now we're getting into an area, once again, oversold here, short term. You can see there's the 10-day moving average up there. Uh, and there is uh, where we are trading here. Uh, we're also into an area of support. Uh, so maybe um, if we get some sort of an upward move with this having coming up on uh, Bitcoin, that can turn Coinbase around. Been a little bit surprised to see uh, Coinbase move like this, but uh, even with all the other coins that trade on Coinbase, you can see that Bitcoin is still big daddy as far as uh, Coinbase is concerned. So it broke out just like uh, uh, Bitcoin has. Uh, but we're in an area where it's going to try to hold there at that wave four oversold um, at an area where it could hold uh, and um, the having coming up. So, you know really aggressive entry could be to try to catch at least a bounce here back up towards that 10 day moving average. Glad they asked on with that one. Yeah, yeah, I am as well. Thank you for that question, Will. Shout out to Will. Let's go over to MU. Yeah, goodness, another one that we haven't talked about in a while. Micron. Um, and you can see that uh, um, there we had a big, you know, same thing. You mentioned AI uh, in your earnings conference call and you get a big move higher. It's going through a nice consolidation, a little bit of a tick down. Uh, interest rates are just weighing on it. But if we get a break in rates, uh, that could really uh, help some of these come back to the upside. The issue here that concerns me uh, is the fact that uh, we have um, a pretty decent gap between the 10 day and the 50 day moving average. Notice how as we go back through here, how they kind of meander along a little bit uh, together. And this separation here is the same exact thing of uh, my comment that no security in any time frame gets very far away from the 10 day moving average. When you get a lot of separation between the 10 and the 50, it acts the same way. Those two need to come back together. So do we sell off more on Micron uh, and bring that 10 day moving average down? Or do we continue this consolidation and allow the 50 day to catch up? Obviously the 50 day moves much slower, um, but one of those two scenarios is gonna play out. So I'd be a little nervous on this one uh, as well, uh, right here uh, around this range there of 120, uh, which is exactly where we're trading uh, right now. Uh, but if we uh, if we come down, we've got this big bar here, and that may mean that we come down uh, towards this 110 area um, to get a little tiny bit of consolidation here. And that would probably do enough to bring the 10 and the 50 day back together. Uh, so uh, yeah, a little concern here on this one. Uh, if we can hold 120 and get some sort of a bounce, uh, then I think you're good there. Uh, but we, we've got to keep an eye on that range there between 110 and 120. That, that's a concern. Well, Rob, another phenomenal uh, session, webinar, all of uh, the events, whatever you want to call them. It's always a pleasure and a privilege to uh, be on here with you and uh, to be out with all of our uh, subscribers as well that join us live uh, each week. And so um, I wanted to wrap up this session again just by showing um, – the few uh, features of the platform I went over a bit earlier. Uh, as I said, there's much more to come here, but um, we had a few questions just around um, over accessing the ideas and posts. And so again, we just click on the ideas tab up here, this little light bulb, and you can get access to all of the ideas that have currently been entered. 
And then if you wanted to create your own idea, that's again, uh, basically executing the position. This is a draft uh, post or a draft idea, rather, a post you know, uh, make synonymous, equate it to a draft idea. And then I wanted to touch on, uh, because I made the mention that the draft of um, the draft idea, the post, is uh, not meant to be a discussion board because that's more or less a reminder for you to have a, a visual of um, each day watching the pattern until you're ready to enter that position. Whereas we also have this feature in the community on the Hub platform here, and this is where you can find the actual discussion boards and uh, the different chats. So for a quick example, the Hub Live chat here uh, has all of the recordings from Jeff Beamer's Hub Live sessions, so you can view those if you uh, haven't been able to attend those live, but we are going to continue to expand um, all of the functionality you see here. It's, uh, it's really, it gets me goosebumps talking about everything that's going to eventually uh, be available on this platform, and I'm excited for, for when that day comes. So just wanted to kind of finish up on that note to uh, make sure everyone was clear for anyone that might have joined us a bit later. Um, so hopefully that's all right with you, Rob. Oh, absolutely. And uh, just talking about how uh, I mentioned this before, you know, Reddit just went public and it is a $10 billion valuation. Uh, and, um, you know, it's just an area where you have communities and discussion boards and chat rooms and stuff. And the software has all that and a charting platform uh, with live charts, live LA Wave, et cetera. So imagine what this is going to be worth at a time. So just one more reminder, you can get it for free right now, just go into hub.com. So um, it, it, it is amazing with all the things that we have uh, available to us now from the hub organization. So um, I just think it's an amazing piece of software and I hope everybody uses it and starts to enjoy it. Thanks for spending your time. I'm going to get back to the markets. Uh, we'll see everybody that are alert subscribers Thursday night. Uh, and for uh, the rest of you, uh, watch for the U.S. market update this weekend. Uh, look forward to talking to you again soon. Take care, everybody.